China's real estate giants went bankrupt. Is the financial storm coming? On January 29th, China's second largest private enterprise, HNA Group, announced its bankruptcy due to insolvency. The bankruptcy of this giant enterprise, which had $1.23 trillion in assets and was involved in a wide range of industries, was a huge blow to the Chinese economy. Unfortunately, just one week after the news of HNA's bankruptcy, there was more shocking news from China. Real estate company China Fortune Land Development Co. also declared bankruptcy. Some industry insiders had previously predicted that real estate companies would be most likely to fall after HNA. This is because they're the most vulnerable to significant debt defaults as a result of high indebtedness and the fact that the Beijing authorities raised their financing threshold last year. Last year, China's banking regulator added three conditions to loans for real estate companies. The gearing ratio after excluding pre-receipts can't exceed 70%, the net debt ratio can't exceed 100%, and the cash-to-short-term debt ratio can't be less than 1. Violation of these three conditions will be taken into consideration while determining companies' financing eligibility. Real estate enterprises are essentially sacrificed to protect the banks. They're stuck accumulating new debts to pay off old ones so as not to bring the banks down and cause a corporate bond payment crisis. So in this case, a bankruptcy storm in the real estate sector is within expectations. China Fortune Land Development Co. was one of the top 10 real estate companies in China until 2019. But the company was in huge debt, with an astronomical interest-bearing debt balance of over 200 billion yuan, equivalent to one-third of HNA. This year, it has 59.7 billion yuan of non-liquid debt due, and only weeks after ringing in 2021, it had 5.2 billion yuan of overdue debt, while available funds were only at 800 million yuan. China Fortune Land Development Co. consequently announced it was going bankrupt and said it was trying to find a solution, hoping that the government would help persuade the company's creditors to give more debt repayment time or help find new funds. Last year, Evergrande Group announced that it was going bankrupt. It released a message stating that the 128 banks that had lent them money would be suffering losses, many would lose their jobs, and society would become unstable, pleading for help from the government. The group was trying to force the regulator to approve its restructuring with a listed property company in Shenzhen, through which it can issue new shares to obtain funds. China Fortune Land Development Co. is trying to save itself using the same tactics as Evergrande Group, except it has already violated the three new rules for loans, making it very difficult to borrow additional money to pay off old debt. In January this year, there were rumors that the Hebei provincial government wanted to step in to bail China Fortune Land Development Co. out and bring in new shareholders. Now it seems that none of these proposals have been successful. It's very similar to HNA's bankruptcy. Guo Shuqing, chairman of the China Banking Regulatory Commission, warned that China's real estate bubble has been at a high for a long time, but China's finances have become overly dependent on it. Now the country has a huge backlog of excess properties that can't be sold, which could not only crush the real estate industry itself, but also lead to a serious subprime mortgage crisis. Guo also mentioned, that among the 130 financial crises since the start of the 20th century, more than 100 of them are related to property markets. He believes that China's real estate-related loans account for 39% of the bank's loans. Combined with large numbers of bonds, equity, trusts, and other funds entering the real estate industry, the real estate field is the biggest gray rhino financial risk at this stage in China. Miss Li, a real estate market manager in Shanghai, told the Epic Times that although Guo Shuqing said that the mainland's real estate loans accounted for 39% of banking sector loans, the actual figure is definitely higher. This is because Chinese banks are more protective of central and state-owned enterprises. These enterprises can get low-interest loans from banks for developing beneficial new energy technology. 
But enticed by the high rate of return on real estate, these enterprises don't really use the money for technological development. Instead, they invest it into real estate development to make money. As a result, real estate loans in the mainland may actually make up as high as 50 to 60 percent of all banking sector loans. It's been 40 years since China began the economic reform known as the opening of China. In the past 20 years, the real estate industry has become one of the most important engines of China's rapid economic development. This is mainly manifested in two aspects. The first aspect, most revenue of local governments comes from selling land to land developers. This money is used to cover the costs of maintaining local government operations. The second aspect, real estate drives the prosperity of the entire financial system in China. Mortgage lending for real estate has provided a very large pool of resale capital in the financial system for the past 20 years. A lot of houses were built, but no one ended up living in them. Everyone wanted to get rich off of real estate, so all these houses became speculations and investments, remaining uninhabited. So far, it would take over two years to sell all these unused properties. Now, rigid demand is far below the market supply. If the houses can't be sold even with price reductions, the bank's mortgage loans will become a problem. China will have a subprime mortgage crisis like the United States in 2008. In 2008, many banks' mortgage loans in the United States were higher than the price of the houses. At the time, mortgaged houses were already insolvent, so they could only be repossessed. This is a vicious cycle. The longer you can't get houses back, the more house prices drop. Finally, the bank collapses, becoming a big risk to society. Beijing authorities also once intended to control real estate and tighten financial loans, which resulted in the collapse of a large number of enterprises. Additionally, without revenue from real estate, many local governments will have financial problems because the taxes and profits from state-owned assets are far from enough to meet the high government expenses. So when all these factors are added together, the first one to be crushed would be the real estate industry itself. The second would be China's banking sector, just like the Wall Street crash of 2008. Starting an enterprise has a very low return, not to mention a lot of risks, such as having to invest a lot of energy, manpower, and money. In contrast, speculating in real estate can easily give a 35% return. If that's the case, then who would want to start an enterprise? The real estate bubble has been discussed for many years, but Beijing authorities have essentially no control over this phenomenon. This all comes down to the most fundamental issue, China's state system has created a weak economic structure, a chaotic economic model riddled with corruption.